When the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, James Marape, touched Prime Minister Narendra Modi's feet, the unique gesture of respect created a stir across the world. His humility and the warm welcome he gave to visiting Indian Prime Minister made headlines. He told Prime Minister Modi that we are victims of global power of play. And referring to PM Modi, he asserted that you are the leader of the global south. Vion's principal diplomatic correspondent, who is in Sydney, had a candid conversation with James Marape. Here are some excerpts from the interview. Uh, my first question to you is an obvious question. Uh, the protocol, which was essentially broken when you received the Indian Prime Minister at the airport, and uh, that traditional welcome, it has been the biggest story in India and uh, something that has been very viral as well. Uh, what, what is your thoughts about that uh, essentially and what is the idea behind it, I mean, uh, uh, to follow that Indian tradition? Well, firstly, it's not an exclusive Indian tradition. We come from a, a Melanesian society where we welcome elders uh, with respect and give them respect where it is deserved. Uh, this sort of welcome is not uh, uh, an ordinary welcome. It's not an everyday welcome to a guest or visitor. We, as I said, my own society here at Papua New Guinea has uh, over 800 different languages. Uh, inside, we have uh, their, their own associated cult, cult, cultural practices. And uh, in few of my cultures, it's an, an ancient culture where we do bestow that level of respect to, to important, important elders who do visit uh, tribal land, who do visit uh, our society. And for me, as Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, uh, acknowledging that uh, Prime Minister Modi is a senior person, Prime Minister Modi leads uh, the biggest democracy by population uh, uh, in a top five economy. Uh, he could have completely ignored Papua New Guinea and Pacific and passed us by. Uh, for him to choose uh, to spend uh, uh, almost a day with us here in Port Mosby, visiting Port Mosby, and to meet the Pacific Island leaders where I would be co-hosting that meeting with him, I felt it proper for me to receive him myself at the airport and give respect to a senior global statesman who was visiting Papua New Guinea for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, so you talked about the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the welcome uh, that was given, but essentially uh, it was uh, a viral uh, visual as well. What do you have to say about that as well? Because many people in India appreciated your gesture towards the Indian Prime Minister. Well, he, he as I said earlier, he's a leader of his uh, people. He, he's also a uh, uh, deeply spiritual man in his own faith. Papua New Guinea, we also spiritual people in our own faith as part of our Christian heritage also. Uh, in the Christian worldview, we respect elders. There's a big uh, Bible teaching to respect elders. You humble yourself in the face of others. And again, in my own cultural context and in my own spiritual worldview, as a Christian, uh, giving respect to elder is important. And he was a senior statesman, not just a leader of India, but more importantly, as I pitch and the Pacific Island leaders view that uh, it cannot be just a two-way street in global geopolitics. Uh, mm -hmm. India has emerged easily as the leader of the global south. Uh, so you also said that India is the third biggest voice in the global politics. Uh, uh, if you can elaborate on those comments when you made at the FIPEC uh, summit, because uh, um, India, of course, played an important role, we all understand, but you specifically said third biggest uh, uh, power, essentially. So if you can talk about that. Well, I know I, I'm, I'm, I'm the chief political planner of my own country. When I look into time, when I see into time, I see the emergence or re-emergence, I should put it, of India. Uh, India before the Industrial Revolution, India was in itself uh, 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 a conglomerate of cultures and nations with its own civilization. And in the modern world going forward into the future, uh, the India's own domestic uh, ability for its own consumption and technology to fuel its own economy, but also its unique role in reaching out East, West, South, North, uh, in my view, will place India in a 
in a, in a uh, position of dominance. Essentially, uh, this visit solidifies India and Pacific countries' relationship. Uh, but in the larger Pacific, uh, the Pacific countries. Uh, the role they play, the geostrategic role they play, if you can talk about that, especially in the vision of the Indo-Pacific. Now, India backs the Indo-Pacific vision. How do you see Pacific countries playing an important role in this vision? Well, Pacific country, our airspace and the sea space is quite substantial, as I did mention earlier. And so we, we are caught in the middle of the, the different blocks of nations, whether it is actually fiscal space on the world map or mm -hmm. blocks of nation by ideology and worldviews. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, PNG and the Pacific is in the middle of this this divide, this contest. Uh, the name Pacific in itself is a peaceful word. We want to we want to live peacefully and coexist with all economies, all nations that we relate to. And uh, with our own consolidation of relations with India gives us the third Ted realm, as I said, Ted perspective, Ted block, Ted national, Ted nation, group of nations leadership, and India has emerged in that space so that we dilute the two-way street and congestion that is happening at the international politics level where there is no room for war and talk about, uh, you know, war and territorial contest. Respecting territories we have today, work the space of economy, work the space of keeping, keeping mother head uh, hosp uh, hospitable and livable for not just us, but more importantly, children who will come after us. Because Pacific nations speak from an existential threat that is facing us. Sea level rise, climate change is facing, is giving huge threat to small island states. And we come on the table from this existential threat to beg and speak to big global leaders, here the small people. The minister also spoke about the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war, defense pact signed between his country and the United States, and he also shared his views on China's role in the Pacific. Uh, sir, you also pointed out during your address the impact of the Russia-Ukraine conflict on your country. If you can elaborate for our viewers the impact of the conflict on your country in terms of the inflationary pressure your country is facing and perhaps uh, also talk about the region as well. I was using that as a case in point to point out that, you know, politics or geopolitics or conflict elsewhere has an impact on economies globally. And we import the cost of fuel rice, for instance, to our local economies. The, the fuel that is being imported into the Pacific Island countries to ensure that they have electricity supply has the price of that inflation causes of itself. Uh, sir, uh, this week also saw a pact being signed uh, with the Americans, the Papua New Guinea US uh, pact. If you can talk about that, uh, uh, do you think that it will promote stability uh, in the region? Other relationship we have uh, with every other nation, every other nation have our own peculiar aspects of relationship with US. We have now this specific defense cooperation agreement that elevates it to uh, a relationship with US instead of a combined shared relationship with other uh, other nations of similar value and similar military arrangements. We're now having this specific relation with USA, just like we have specific military corporations with Australia and, and Indonesia and other nations. Uh, are you looking at similar defense uh, pacts with India? Uh, as we as we advance into the future, you know, it's a it's a matter of process and time. Final question to you is uh, the Chinese role in the Pacific. How do you see China's role in Pacific? bilateral relationship with uh, your country as well, because in the region, many countries don't have a very positive view about China, whether it's in India, whether it's in Australia. Well, different countries have, have, have different views on each other. Papua New Guinea has a, a deep and friendly relation with China that I must admit and, uh, and, and, and indicate to you and for your audience. Uh, we don't intend to compromise that relationship that relationship with China. Uh, likewise, I want to appreciate the United States of America when we signed the DCA. Uh, the DCA doesn't prohibit us from relating with China or any other nation, in India included. Uh, they give respect to our independence and to our freedom of association with, with every other nation. With